In this video, we'll introduce the idea of second order differential equations and why they may also be useful in modeling situations. So first order equations are really useful in terms of modeling because you're modeling a rate of change as a function of the value and time or whatever the other parameter is in your equation. That's great. What about second order equations? Well, second order equations come up a lot when we're talking about physical motion because of Newton's second law. Right, Newton's second law tells me that force equals mass times acceleration. And for a lot of situations, the force that is acting on an object depends on its position. So if the force depends on position, which is pretty frequent, how does the acceleration relate to position? Well, the acceleration is the second derivative of the position. So a situation like this it gives me something this big F that is going to depend on the position of this object, equaling something related to the second derivative of that position. So right now I have right here a second order differential equation that's staring at me right in terms of this law, something like, you know, 5x equals 2 times x double prime, where the force is now 5 times the position and the mass is 2, would give me a second order equation that I could try to solve. And one of the most prevalent ways this comes about is the idea of masses on springs. So if I have an object hanging from a spring, the net force determines the overall acceleration. So the mass of this object times its overall acceleration should equal the net force. And there's two factors that sort of come into play with this net force. We're going to sort of ignore the gravity factor here. We're going to wrap it into how we define our position so that where the object hangs naturally under just gravity is our zero point for position. But now what acts on the object? Well, it's the force of the spring. And the force of the spring is going to sort of pull it back towards or push it back towards this stable point here. And Hooke's law tells us that the force in a situation is proportional to the position. This is from the zero point. So this gives us a force of negative k times x. And the other force involves the drag force. And this drag force is going to be because the air is of this object moving up and down, or if it's in some sort of fluid, it's going to be a bigger amount that will oppose the velocity. So from a drag force, we get something like minus gamma times V. Gamma is the common letter used for a drag coefficient here. So K here is a spring constant, and gamma is the drag coefficient. But then what do we notice here? Well, A is the second derivative position, so X double prime. V is the velocity, that's the change in position, that's X prime. So what we're really left with here is something like m times x double prime equals negative kx minus gamma times x prime. That is a second order differential equation. You can get a very similar equation if you look at circuits. The main sort of property in circuits as opposed to Newton's law is Kirchhoff's law, which means the total voltage drop around a closed circuit must be zero. An example here that gives a second order equation is an RLC circuit. And you have a circuit that in it has a resistor, it has a capacitor, and it has an inductor. And then over here, just a power, we'll put a battery of a certain voltage. Now, what do you know about the voltage drop across each of these elements? These may be things you know or don't know, but this comes from basic electronics sort of work. We know for a resistor, the voltage drop equals the current times R, which is the resistance of that resistor. Across the capacitor, the voltage drop is Q over C, where Q is the charge that's in that circuit at that point, and C is the capacitance of that capacitor, that's a fixed constant. And for an inductor, the voltage drop is L, inductance of that inductor, times the change in current with respect to time. And for the battery, it's some fixed constant V, which is the battery's voltage. Now, the key point here is current is the change in charge, which means that I is equal to dQ dt, and then so dI dt is a second derivative. And now if all of these voltage drops must add to zero, then we get something like the following. We get that V plus IR plus Q over C plus L DI DT equals zero. Or putting everything in terms of Q, 
we have L times the second derivative plus R times the first derivative plus one over C times Q equals minus V. And that again gives us a second order equation to solve. So while first order equations come right out of rates of change in how they behave, second order equations come out of physical systems usually involving force or circuits because those are sort of naturally embedded in second derivatives. So that's why these equations come about and what they look like and we'll see in the future how we can go about trying to analyze and solve them.